This is Advanced Warfare. It's one of the craziest jetpack games in Call of Duty history, and my goal is to unlock the hardest achievement in the game, a 30 kill nuke. But there's just one problem. I've never played this game before. Right, so I gotta figure out how to like, how do you jetpack? Now you might be wondering why I'm playing an eight year old game to begin with, and the answer is simple. I feel left out. I stopped playing COD after Black Ops 1 and only started gaming seriously again during the pandemic, so I missed out on playing a lot of games. And it makes me wonder if it's true when people say that they were some of the best. They were great games. The best titles. The golden age of Call of Duty. Well, I'm tired of being left out. So starting today, I'm going for a nuke in the first Call of Duty jetpack game because I love learning new movement and taking on a new challenge. I mean, how hard can it be? Ah, uh, dude, I can't keep getting this close. I don't know how much longer I can play this game. Well, first things first, I gotta actually get the game. Are you serious? Yeah, so I wasn't exactly thrilled about that. And to make matters worse, I found out you shouldn't even play old COD games on Steam because hackers can remote access into your computer. So I ended up downloading this third-party program that lets you play Advanced Warfare on private servers and has anti-cheat. Oh, and it's free. Yo, let's go. Small little hiccup, but we're in. We're in. Okay. All right. So we got a server list here. Okay. Create a class. So I got like everything locked right now, but from what I was reading online, you can actually just unlock all the items and classes just through the program. So I spent a few minutes going through the guns and figuring out the inventory system to create my first class. Ooh, HBR. Isn't this what Nate Shot used? <laughs> Nate Shot on your screen has switched over to the HBR. What? Okay, I might I just have to go with that. And I also found out there's a firing range where I could adjust my sensitivity and test out different class setups. Okay, my sensitivity is way too low here. <laughs> Wait, what? What is that? Okay, so that's the shield thing. But I didn't want to waste too much time menu diving because I wanted to get right into my first game. Okay, yo, let's go. First game on. Nice little one piece. Oh, whoa, what the? I gotta figure out how do I jetpack. Swapping, reloading. Yeah, yo. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you got a double jump. <laughs> Let's go. Wait, what was that? After just one game, I was already obsessed with learning this new movement. And during the next map, I got more comfortable with jumping, learned how to slide, and figured out I could boost slam into the ground. But things got really fun when I found out I could boost in any direction. Oh, does that go forward? <gasps> so you can jump and then press in your analog stick to go forward. Ooh, there we go, 18 and 23. Going negative. <laughs> So can you strafe left and right? Okay, so if I go up, yeah, you can, what? That's actually sick. And after figuring that out, I started to focus a little bit more on actually shooting my gun. And pretty quickly, I began to feel like a demon on the map. Okay, maybe not. I was still a complete bot, but I was having so much fun. I love the verticality of this. Like it adds so much like a, of a different dimension to the game. But I did begin to notice that almost no one was using the HBR. I just got melted with whatever that was. So even though I liked using it, maybe the HBR wasn't meta. Nah! Well, the next few hours flew by as I created some new classes to try out and got more comfortable with the game. It was also exciting playing so many new maps for the first time. Solar, I feel like I've heard of solar before. Okay, retreat. Is it like a jungle map at all? Terrace. I was basically just having a really good time. I do really like these maps a lot though. There's actual red dots on the mini map. This game is like pure chaos and I love it. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was in the honeymoon phase. By the end of the day, the excitement of playing a new game had started to wear off and I was beginning to feel very overwhelmed with the jetpack movement. I didn't really know what I was doing and I was just mashing buttons during gunfights. I was also missing a ton of shots because I'd never played a game with so much vertical movement. And to make matters worse, there were a lot of good players in these lobbies. I was getting smoked. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. I think my highest kill streak so far was maybe like six or seven, which is nowhere close where I need to be. The number of maps to learn is just a lot. I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
Well, fortunately, all I needed was a good night's sleep because I woke up the next morning feeling like a new person. And more importantly, I had figured out a plan to get this nuke. You know how when you play an RPG, you have to create a character and level them up to beat the game? Well, I realized that I was a brand new character with the skill level of an NPC trying to take on the final boss. And that just wasn't going to work. I needed to level up my skills. But first, I had to build a character. <laughs> that is like the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> if I see this coming at me on the map, I am running. And pretty soon, I had a character that just felt right. You guys ready for this? Boom. No, I'm just playing. Here we go, this feels more like me. And with my character designed, I was ready to get to work. I spent countless hours on day two in private matches, practicing my jetpack movement and shooting bots to practice my aim. I decided to give up on the HBR and focus on using the BAL and MP40 because they seem like the meta and the best way to get this nuke. Getting used to the guns felt natural, but the movement just felt weird. I knew I had to take it one step at a time, so I first focused on using my jetpack on the ground by practicing sliding and strafing in different directions. I really gotta get used to pressing in my left analog stick and moving it in a certain direction. And after about 30 minutes, I was feeling pretty confident with it. If you're sliding out and hitting with that strafe, like, oh my gosh, that's gonna be so hard to track. So I moved on to practicing in the air. But that's when I ran into a problem. Jumping high in the air is cool and all, but I knew from playing the day before that I was pretty much a sitting duck as I was falling to the ground. I needed to find a way to get out of the air quickly if I was being shot. So the fastest way that I've really found to do that is to go up and then boost slam into the ground like that, but it just kills all of my momentum. I had solved one problem, but now I was an easy target when I hit the ground. I knew there had to be a way to keep my speed going. But after hours of failing, I eventually realized that I needed some help. It was time to hit up Tony. Now Tony has the most insane movement on pretty much any game that he touches, so I figured if there was one person out there who could help me, it would be him. So I sent him a message, and sure enough, nothing. I waited for weeks and not a single response. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Seriously, he's an awesome guy and he responded right away. You should definitely subscribe to his YouTube channel. But anyways, after talking it through with him, I realized that I was pressing my sprint and slide button just a split second too soon when I hit the ground. And with a little readjustment, I was finally able to get the movement down. That, yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And with that figured out, I was finally ready to go play some pubs. Now that night, things really began to click for me. After hours of movement training, I didn't have to think so much about using my jetpack, which meant I could really focus on improving my aim. And by the end of the night, I was feeling pretty good. But it still wasn't good enough. So on day three, I doubled down on my jetpack practice in the morning to focus on smoothing out my movement and played as many pubs as I could that night to work on my aim. I also started to figure out what maps were popular through the end game voting system, so I capped off the night by creating my own custom games to better explore these maps. I feel like this could be a good spot to go for that nuke. And with things going so well, I went back to retreat the next day for some movement practice in the morning, and by the end of day four, I was feeling like a completely new player. My aim felt perfectly in sync with my movement, and I finally knew many of the maps well enough to know where the enemy team would be. But most importantly, I was now feeling confident in my gameplay. It was time to get serious about getting this nuke. Day 5 honestly started out great. I almost doubled my killstreak PR and then beat it the very next game. So even though I later died to no footstep audio, which is probably the thing I hate most about Call of Duty, I was feeling optimistic because I was making real progress. But then on day 6 and 7, my patience really began to get tested. I just couldn't find very many games with real players. I mean, it was the weekend, so maybe people were just hanging out with IRL friends. But I didn't have time for doing things like that. I needed to get this nuke. So I kept practicing my movement and played pubs against mostly bots. By the time day 8 rolled around, I was anxious to get into some games with real players. But little did I know that over the next few days, this challenge was going to bring me to my breaking point. I just need ammo, man. I'm down horrendous. Did I just get killed by a bot like that? I can't keep getting this close. I was not recording. Uh, I just got this DNA bomb and I was not recording. No. 
Yeah, I had achieved my goal to get a nuke, but to me it didn't matter because I needed the gameplay for this video. So I felt nothing as I watched my nuke go off for the very first time. All of that hard work over the last few days was wasted, and now I had to figure out a way to do it again, but I had lost all of my motivation. I was so annoyed with myself for making such a dumb mistake that I didn't even play on day 10. And the next two days were just more hours of failure, so by day 13, my heart just wasn't in it anymore. Even when I had a good kill streak going and then died to no audio, I just didn't care. I'm not even annoyed, I'm just freaking sucks, man. When I logged off on day 13, I was ready to give up on the game. But doing this challenge made me realize something, that it's possible to take your goals too seriously. I had a blast the first few days when I was learning the jetpack movement and not worrying about getting a nuke. But as soon as I started putting a lot of pressure on myself, I forgot the reason I started playing this game in the first place, to have fun. Pushing yourself to achieve your goals can be a good thing, but you can't let them stress you out and ruin the experience. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Okay, it's Call of Duty, it's not that serious. But on day 15, I forgot about the meta and decided to have some fun with the gun that started this journey for me. And after playing a few games, something crazy started to happen. I'm out of ammo. And one more kill. Oh my gosh, no way. No. Yes, let's go. Yes. Oh my gosh, with the HBR. I cannot believe I just got that. Yes. Oh, I thought I was so dead after I didn't get that knife kill. Oh my gosh. I don't think it was a coincidence that as soon as I started taking the game less serious and started having more fun, I almost immediately got another nuke. It was the universe telling me that it's okay to lighten up a little bit, and also that maybe Nate Shot was right all along about the HBR. 